So here we are in sailing vessel Seefalke and we're taking you on tour today at our floating home and floating office. This is a really long video and we get that and we hope that you'll watch all of it but if you don't want to watch all of it we did break it down into sections and in the description below you'll see the timestamps of each section so you can fast forward through to the sections that interest you and skip the sections that don't interest you. Welcome on board. Sea Palka was built specifically for the kind of blue water sailing that we've been doing since we left Stralsund, Germany on August 19th, 2018. She has safely taken us across the Baltic Sea, through the Kiel Canal, the North Sea, the English Channel, the Bay of Biscay, and all along the Spanish and Portugal Atlantic coastlines, into Morocco and down the northwestern African coast, to the Canary Islands, and now into Cape Verde. Next, we cross the Atlantic Ocean with Barbados in our sights. Eventually, we will bring Sea Falca to Sweet Home, Alabama to visit friends and family before we head out on our next adventure. Sea Falca is a Seahawk 37 designed and built in the Netherlands by Yachtbau Nord in 1974. Seefalke is a long keel, catch-rigged steel ship with 37 feet waterline and 43 feet length overall. Seefalke weighs about 10 tons and she's not a racer, but she's safe and seaworthy as can be. Our ship Seefalke has only had three owners in her 44 year life, Norbert Drucker, Bert Oldman, and Mike Olmschneider. During Norbert's childhood, his father owned Sea Falca, and they sailed her for 35 years. He sold her to Bernd in 2009. Bernd is the president of VBS, a sailing club in Bremen, Germany. Sea Falca was the crown jewel of the club for eight years until Bernd sold her to Mike in 2017. While we were sailing through the Kiel Canal in August 2018, we had a rare opportunity to have all three owners together to talk about our seaworthy ship. The biggest uh, sailing ship in our, our club. And for us, you know, we always had only small ones, you know, yeah. and then was the Sea Falcon came. It was unbelievable. It was good. But then we decided, okay, to sell it, you know, the story, and then yeah, you yeah, took yeah. over, and you are <laughs> the, only the third owner. Only the third owner. Built, yeah. built 73, only the third owner. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. That means also a lot, you know. Yeah. And as youngsters, we were young, and then I can remember this Nobby's uh, parents or father, he allowed us to sail this once, you know. So then we were young and then uh -huh. shut a big, big sailing boat. It was for us really exciting. And, uh... Welcome to the upper deck of uh, Seefalke. We're here at uh, the bow. Bowspreet. Remember, we lost some uh, we lost the, the boards in our first gale, um, but I haven't felt like replacing them. <laughs> um, We've had much other things on our list that were more important. Well, I think it's even more practical. Anyway, so this is the Bowspreet. Um, we have, starting here, we have two four stays. Port force day and the um, starboard force day, which is a typical rig for the old um, trade wind boats. They had two force sail because they would have one Genoa on one force sail and a uh, force day, and another Genoa on the other force day, and um, yeah, just um, ride the trade winds with two Genoas. We have on the port force day, we have rigged a furling Genoa. And it's about 120% overlapping Genoa. Um, we had some trouble with the furling mechanism forever. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is fixed now, let's see. And we have not used um, the second force tail yet. But I guess we're gonna, we, we're gonna use it on the, on the big crossing. And we have a cutter stay, this, this one here. Um, the cutter stay is the uh, um, the third force day that we have, um, it carries our jib. Um, it's a self jibing jib, you see over that, you see that rail. So uh, when we jibe, um, the 
the jib um, changes its sides automatically. You see the jib? Our jib has boom, which is uh, in today's yachting design uh, a rare design. But I love it. It really helps, um, especially if you're on a uh, broad reach or a downwind course. Um, it helps to stabilize um, the jib. It's a very good, very good design. Thank you. We have our anchor. That is our primary anchor. Um, it is a 25 kilogram anchor. Um, holds pretty well, and we it goes with a 40 meter of anchor chain that allows us to anchor in depth up to I would say 15 meters. Talk about those sea fans that you're leaning on right now, because this is one of my favorite features. Of oh the yeah, boat. you can see the uh, this boat is designed for uh, um, heavy weather sailing too, and it has massive sea fans. You can see that see down here welded. You know, it has like two rails. Um, it goes all the way from the bow to the stern and back on the other side. It's really massive, and um, in combination with our sea fans over here. Um, it holds major blows. So if some of us or some equipment um, getting lifted in heavy waves, um, it can crash against it. And won't, it won't um, fall overboard and um, it won't hurt sea fence. Um, A lot of other sailors have have talked about our sea fence and how they wish they had one. That, oh yeah. How they have just, to strap themselves. Just have a look at, the, at, the, at our neighbor's boat over there. It's quite okay, a normal sea fence. You see, it has. Um, a massive um, beams, but it doesn't have what, what we call it, plastic um, holes, but no beams. Yeah, I mean, you would have to strap yourself in, really, even in just general situations out on the foredeck um, on that boat. Whereas here, th this really, you can hold on to it and it will hold you. It will definitely hold the weight of large human beings. And of course, the sea dogs. Well, we have our, our potty area. Yes, this is for the dogs, not the humans. <laughs> <laughs> and this is our hatch that goes down into the bow. Yeah. Cabin. It's, um, specifically practic practical when we have to um, change sails. So then one of us will be down there, one of us will be up here and just um, take over the sail for that hatch. Yeah, we just hand it up right through the hatch. It's very convenient. And so we keep all our extra sails down in the in the bow, except for the mizzen stay sail, which we'll talk about when we get back to the stern and the cockpit. Exactly. Okay, talk about um, sea fans. That's another unique um, feature of this boat is the mast fans. You know, the mast fans is um, yeah, the mast fans in today's designs um, the. Um, most of the lines go into the cockpit. So for made for most of the work you have to do at the main mast, you ha don't have to leave the cockpit, which of course adds to safety. Um, in the 70s designs, that was not possible. So for all sailing maneuvers, or for most sailing maneuvers, someone has to come here to the mast, um, no matter what the conditions. So that makes me feel especially safe when I have to come out and uh, hoist or uh, bring in the mainsail. Yeah, so you can you can lean against it with your full body weight. Yeah, it is you can work so helpful. Inches, you can work um, the halyards, you can work the sails, and um, you have both hands available for the work. So, yeah. so what's this here hanging up? Um, so yeah, that's our solar shower. <laughs> yeah, we do not our have warm, a shower inside. A warm water system. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we just fill it with water. You see, it's all black or dirty. Then it's all black. Dirty um, on the outside, but not the inside. Dirty on the outside. It's clean the inside um, and um, has a little thermometer over here. So we fill it with water and we expose it to the sun. Um, the water heats up really good. Um, and um, it has a little nozzle, and we just sit here and have a shower yeah. on the deck. So the mass is also it's a it's a massive design. It's um. 12 point something meter high so you may say that's not very high and it's not very high but since we have two masts we can um, we easily uh, distribute the sail area on two masts which um, makes it easier to handle every sail is a little lighter and a little smaller 
if you only have one mast and if um, worst case one mast breaks down you still have the other one huh it's yeah. a little backup um, and also one of the major um, one of the major advantages of two mast you can balance um, and trim the boat just a little better okay, more good. options um, so then we have um, we don't have a furling system on the main so oh, no, we don't have so we come out on the deck and bring the sail up and down manually yeah we have three reef lines though so we can um, manually increase or decrease the area of the um, of the main sail and then at the mast we have several electrical outlets and we um, run a spotlight over here so this is especially helpful when we enter a, a port or a marina in the dark and um, up there we have another spotlight that's our deck light um, that illuminates um, the deck when we have to do maneuver in the dark and really helps very much. Mm -hmm. yeah, as we have passages very far away from land and very far away from um, gas stations and uh, possibilities to reprovision, um, we also carry um, extra canisters of gas, diesel, and water. Mm -hmm. yeah, so this is all over here. And we use different canisters for the different uh, liquids. So the steel canisters are for diesel. Mm -hmm. um, the um, plastic canisters are for gas. We use the gas in our outboarder or in our um, generator. And the wide canisters, and you may see more on the on the stern the stern deck, is for water. Yeah, fresh water, drinking water. Okay, here's uh, one part of our power station. <laughs> it's our solar power station. The dogs love it. Because the dogs are guarding it. <laughs> because it's, it gets warm when the sun shines on it. And they That's love right. to sit on it, which of course... <laughs> the captain doesn't love, but they love it. <laughs> not quite. It, it doesn't help the intent purpose. It's 200 watt. It's a 200 watt um, solar power. It's walkable. You can walk on it. And um, it really helps a lot. Um, it's our main source of energy when we are out there in the sun. Mm -hmm. We also have several um, mobile um, solar panels <coughs> that have between um, tw um, 7 and 20 watt peak and um, they help us to charge our electronics. So when we are out at sea, um, we charge um, battery packs for them. Um, and um, the battery packs will charge our mobile phones, our iPads, and our other electronics. Yeah. And we can move them around, so we can move them um, wherever um, the sun shines best. Because this solar panel sometimes is also um, covered by the sails. That's right. Um, so, but we can move it. So our generator, um, it's a two kilowatt generator, portable generator, runs on gas. It's very loud, it's very fumy. But um, it already saved our asses. <laughs> you got that right. Um, <laughs> when we were short of power on the way from the Canaries to Cape Verde, we want more motor breakdown. So here we are at Stern Deck. Um, that's mainly a cargo area. <laughs> yes, this is like a garage, <laughs> an open air garage. Yeah. Um, anyway, it has a secondary um, and a tertiary um, steering um, device. So. We do have another steering wheel that runs on the um, on the hydraulic um, steering mechanism, and we have a mechanical emergency tiller um, that is also a great rudder indicator, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Also, here, as you can see, um, we have two life raft, two life rafts, one here and one over there. Two life rafts. Um, so why do we have two life rafts? Um, um, this boat came with a life raft, but life rafts need regular maintenance. So we invited some friends to stay with us, and at a time where the other life raft was um, getting its maintenance, so I bought a second uh, life raft um, for this boat, and um, yeah, I could have sold it. 
But um, yeah, we decided to keep it. <laughs> also, I watched the movie All Is Lost one too many times. And I wanted to make sure we always had a good life raft. We have three anchors on board. Um, so the first one we saw on the boat spread, this is a secondary anchor that we either use as a second um, anchor um, over the, that we use over the bow, or we use it as a stern anchor um, occasionally. And um, yeah, we have a spare anchor um, down in the stern cabin. It, usually the dinghy is um, up here on the, on the stern deck and we keep it here uninflated. Yeah, we roll we, it up real tight and it kind of goes in this area right here. Yeah, and we inflate it only when we use it. Um, we've had it, we just, sometimes we just pull it behind. That's when we do some anchor hopping. We don't want to, you know, pull it up and down again all the time. Then we um, just drag it behind. Um, but usually it goes here um, and together with the outboard motor. Yeah, I love this little dinghy, although there's not a lot of room on it. Uh, it's pretty small for the four of us, but we manage, don't we? Yeah, it's a great little tender. Yeah. This is a fun family activity. We are all in this teeny tiny dinghy. And Mike is <laughs> rolling us off the shore. Backwards. <laughs> Backward in the dinghy. But we're all here, and we're cozy. And I don't know if the pups are too impressed yet, but they will be when we get to the beach. And this is our little outboard motor. And Mike got this uh, when he saw how much I struggled paddling the dinghy. <laughs> so that was kind of a present for me, which, thanks Mike. Yeah, we do not only use the wind as a means of propulsion, we also use the wind to produce some electrical energy. So we have um, a Super Wind 350 the 350 watt um, wind generator um, that um, helps us uh, charge the batteries and that's especially helpful when we are at sail on the way or when we are at anchorage um, somewhere in the trade winds. Um, then, then we can count on approximately three to four amperes um, from this wind generator. So here we are standing in front of the um, mizzen mast so, um, yeah, it's our rear mast called mizzen mast. It carries the mizzen sail over here in the mizzen boom. And uh, it also, we, it's also um, carries a mizzen stay sail, we call it pusher sail, um, that goes between the mizzen mast and the main mast. And it's like a little jenniker for the mizzen mast. You love to play with that mizzen stay sail because there's lots of configurations yes it's, that you um, can use it's not it. easy to set <laughs> yeah. but it gives a little boost of uh, half a knot to almost a knot when the wind comes right and it's also kind of pretty it's pretty <laughs> okay we're going to show you around the main cabin it's actually clean today which it's normally not I'm sure we've got lots of footage of it uh, the way it normally looks, but today it's clean, so we'll take a little tour. Sea Falca is long but narrow. It has plenty of room for living on board. The main salon includes the navigation corner, a settee that can be used as a bed, a dining table that folds down to a bed. Three adults can sleep comfortably in the main cabin and the galley. This is the galley and it's not a very big galley but it is very efficient. The galley is well designed for cooking while underway. Our stove and connected oven are gimbaled. It swings back and forth on two pivot points so it tilts and remains level when the boat is heeling or moving. This helps to keep the pots and pans from sliding around. The oven and stove operate through a gas connection. The butane and or propane tanks are located in the cockpit with lines coming directly into the heating source. You, have, you come in here and it's actually good because you can brace yourself when we're underway and kind of keep yourself from falling over. The stove does tilt with the boat and that's a great feature. We have an oven and three small burners. So we can cook full meals here. We do almost every day. And uh, we do have running water here in the sink. We have 200 liters of water in that tank. 
Um, we have some, you know, dishes. There's a place for everything. Everything has to be very neat. All our tea and coffee and hot chocolate and things like that are, and cups are in here. There's our spices for cooking and some fruit and bread and oil and tea and just things we use every single day are kind of out and handy. So the pots and pans are underneath and all the cleaning supplies and trash bags and sponges and scrub brushes and things like that that we need to clean the boat are under there. So everything has a place. On the boat, you have to be very organized because there's limited space. And then of course we have our fruit and veggies here and uh, easy access to those too. This is the dining room slash sitting room slash office sometimes and it's also our bed <laughs> this table comes down and lays flat even with these cushions and then these two cushions come off and go on top and it makes a double size bed where we sleep at night usually. Um, sometimes when we're underway and we're on shifts and we're on opposite schedules, we sleep in the stern cabin. And we'll show you that later, but it's um, it, it has two bunks in there that we can sleep on also. Um, and then most of our food are in these cabinets here, at least the food we need easy access to. So this is our pasta and rice and oatmeal and soup cabinet and everything's kind of stuffed in there it's pretty full we've got our sauces um we eat a lot of pasta <laughs> and mainly because it's easy to cook and it's quick to cook and that's something we can cook when we're underway um and it's also filling and usually we only get one meal a day when we're um underway because that's just all we have time to do or um that's all the conditions allow usually so we like to have a good hearty meal um, in this middle section, we have crackers, bread, and all our canned foods. Um, some, we do have some canned foods stored away, but this is, we also use a lot of this kind of stuff. We use a lot of the canned mushrooms. We put mushrooms in almost everything. So that's that cabinet. And everything is secured so that when we're underway, it doesn't open and everything fly out. There. And then in this cabinet, we have just um, a whole hodgepodge of things, but we know what's in there. We have some canned tuna and canned sardines. We have eggs. We have all our condiments, like our honey, jelly, peanut butter, um, Nutella, a little bit of extra stuff, and a few snacks. Um, and that kind of Down in this seat is where we keep all our extras. And I'll actually just take the time to show you real quick. You pull this, um, these cushions off. They come off pretty easily. Move them out of the way. Here is a heat locker. And I've never really understood why a boat designer, maybe you can tell me, Mike, why doesn't this thing open like all the way to the end? So we have the space all the way to the end, but we don't have the opening all the way to the end. So there's stuff stuffed back here too. It's mostly water, bottled water and some soft drinks and then we have can more canned foods in here some cookies crackers lots of drinks lots of extra stuff lots of canned goods so that's kind of our extra stuff we don't need quick access to but we will need to get to eventually somewhere when we're in the atlantic and all this goes back together pretty, pretty easily everything in a boat it's one giant puzzle that you just have to take apart and put together a million times. So this is this kind of sitting area. 
It's supposed to be a couch uh, settee. It's also a bed, so you can also sleep on this. Um, this is where the puppies sleep, and this is also where they usually go when the conditions are really rough and we need them to be safe. This bar right here, this board, it's actually a board, comes up from here and comes down into these little grooves. Again, it's another puzzle that must be put together. And we have another, this sleeping bag goes right here. And so come up here, show them, Captain Jack, come on. Come on, good. Come on, Scout. Up you go. Yeah. So this is where they stay when, uh, especially when we're underway. They usually start here sleeping at night and sometimes they end up over on the other side with us, but that's okay. Right? When we're underway, sometimes we have a few other things here that we put here to keep secure. And so they have a little bit smaller space, so they really are protected and they can't slide out because of this board right here. Of course, we have a lot of books, by the way. And um, some, uh, some things are manuals and instructional books and some things are books that are charts and important things that Mike needs uh, for his passage planning. And then other things are just books for entertainment, for reading. And as you can see, everything has to stay secure. Everything has to be stable. So when we're underway and the boat's rocking, things aren't flying all over the place. In this locker, we have quite a few things. We have a lot of extra electronics and things like that. We have our tape and Velcro. We have some candles and lighters and different various things that we need. Mostly a lot of chargers and all of our batteries are in this cabinet and extra binoculars. And in this locker over here, um, we have a few random supplies, but mostly it's our emergency supplies. So we have spotlight, we have flares, we have um, signal flags, we have emergency glasses. So that's mostly emergency supplies and a couple of other things. In all these seats, all this, none of the space is wasted. So underneath Captain Jack and Scout here, there's a big locker that we use for tools. And in fact, this whole bench right here is one big locker and it has two openings. And we keep most of our tools and we have to keep like sander and power drill and um, all kinds of tools under there. And then the other seat um, in the dining area, this one has food in it that we showed you. And then this one also has tools in it, tools and supplies. And um, those are all maintenance and repair things. And then, of course, we have our main chart. This is the closet and the refrigerator and the head. <laughs> we have a variety of things in this area. We have a little head, and uh, it flushes with the use of a pump. We have to pump it when we're done. We don't flush any paper. So we have a brilliant diaper genie here for the paper. And that's what we do with that. And we, that's the greatest invention of all time. We love it. And then some extra supplies, some, uh, this is all the dog stuff. We don't use this sink for water, so we just use it for, it's really a dog pharmacy right now, and a few other things. Um, and on this other side, sorry, <laughs> over here we have like some towels and all of our personal hygiene stuff like shampoo and uh, toothpaste and shaving cream and then some extra clothes back there that we don't need very often um, and then all our extra supplies like extra air fresheners extra um, uh, gels and shampoos and things like that that we may need all the extras are back there where we can get to it but it's not real close and then um, this is our refrigerator and it is not as big as some beer coolers I've seen on the beach in Gulf Shores. So, but it opens at the top and we keep in there milk and butter and some meat and of course our paint brushes <laughs> and uh, cheese and things like that. But we don't have a lot of refrigerator room and uh, it's very energy efficient. And then all our first aid supplies are in this closet too. And right now the bow cabin is a pantry slash uh, closet. So right now, normally two people can sleep in the bow, but they can't right now. Right now, it's all our extra supplies to cross the Atlantic. Everything's not completely secure right now. We also keep our extra sails back here so that we can 
this is the bow of the boat. So when Mike needs a different sail and he's up on the bow, I come down here and I grab the sail and I hand it to him through this hatch. And that's how we handle that. So the sails have to stay back here or up here. And then all of our extra supplies that we need and everything is secure. So nothing can move. We hope that everything is gonna stay put when we're underway. Uh, we're still working on that, but these are all our extra supplies and a lot of extra clothes. <laughs> yeah, so here we are in the stern cabin. Um, that's my most favorite place, by the way. <laughs> um, it's good for two people to sleep in. Um, so at the moment it uh, serves uh, for three purposes, I think. One is, um, yeah, we keep some of our equipment down here. For example, the mizzen stay sail and the blue bag over there and um, some clothes. Um, There's and, a sleeping bag and the, the puppies, life vests are back here, things that we need handy uh, and the um, pump for the dinghy yeah. are back there. And um, some lines and um, some some more safety equipment like life vests or life belts and warm weather um, warm weather gear uh, sorry cold weather gear. Um, and of course, our life vest that we wear. So that is all here. Um, so it's a little bit of a garage, um, but also we when we are on a heavy tilt, um, we use the stern cabin to sleep. Um, because it's just more comfortable. Um, you can't slide um, too much mm -hmm. in these little bunks here. And yeah, if we're if we're healing this way, and you, you can lay on this bunk, and you just kind of are pushed against that wall there, and you can't really get swung around too much. And of course, the same thing on the other side. Uh, but it's a very low ceiling, and that's why I'm not a big fan of it. I usually hit my head on that. But there's a lot of light that comes in, and that's good. Yeah, and um, last but least, we have guests on board. This is the guest cabin. Yes, this is the guest cabin. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll make it nice for guests. We'll move all this stuff that's everywhere. Yeah, we also keep a lot of equipment in the lockers below the bunks or below the seat or over here in that locker. Why don't you show us what's in the lockers? And by the way, the lockers are all pretty roomy, but they're all shaped like triangles and just kind of hard to fit stuff in there. But we have a lot in there. So here we have some spare parts and some tools, like a spare fire extinguisher, um, our electrical toolbox, um, several pumps, several manual pumps, um, some extra lines. Mm -hmm. um, that's all in here. Yeah. other side these are the lines that we use most often we kind of keep them out we used to keep them in here but then we realized we just need to keep them out so here we have like some more heavy lines um, like long lines um, or um, lines anchor lines for the secondary anchor um, and we have the secondary anchor as all in here different mm -hmm. lines all sorts of different lines and um, a secondary anchor uh, the tertiary And this um, over here is our main toolbox. And we used to keep it tucked away in one of the lockers, but we use it so much that now we just keep it out right there on the little chair. And inside that chair is another locker. And it has all our manuals and thing, just spare things like mosquito nets and also our um, courtesy flags. So they're pretty convenient to the cockpit. And these stairs lead right to the cockpit. So the cockpit is in between the main cabin and the stern cabin. So when we do have guests here, they do have a little bit of privacy. They're a little bit tucked away from, from us yeah. <laughs> and the sea dogs. <laughs> okay, so we also have a safe. <laughs> yeah, we had a safe. <laughs> this is the world's greatest safe that was ever built. Uh, so tell the story about our safe, why there's no door on it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a great safe. Um, <laughs> and we kept our um, ships and uh, personal papers in there. And our passports. And our passports. Um, but at one point, um, some, somehow I screwed up the lock, I guess. And we couldn't open it. We just I mean, we could not open um, the safe. And um, I think, was it you or was it me? 
need to uh, take it, the plane home. We both need to take the plane home, but you had your passport and I didn't. My uh, passport okay. was was in there. So and um, so we ended up breaking in to our own safe. Um, and it took like an hour or so. It was pretty good safe. Yeah. Took an hour and uh, all sorts of efforts. And lots of different tools. And a lot of crowbars tools. and <laughs> uh, hammers and saws and uh, we used every tool. Um, on the boat and we finally were able to break in and and now it's just like a little box that's sitting here it does have two little shells we have a thing there in case we want to put a few things in there but yeah now it's just a, a box and, and a funny memory and um, below the stern cabin there is a huge bilge um, just underneath our feet mm -hmm. and um, this is where we keep um, approximately 200 um, liters of uh, bottled water <laughs> as an emergency backup. It's not easy to get to it, but um, it's great storage. It's very deep and uh, it, it'll hold a lot. So this is our navigation corner. Um, so yeah, this is the working place of the navigator. Um, this is our um, navigation table. Underneath we have this compartment here for um, current charts and current handbooks and um, um, navigational material is also contains our uh, our uh, ships and crew documents to help them handy. There's a fire extinguisher um, right here and um, right next to Captain Jack <laughs> <laughs> and our 230 volt um, outlets. Um, here, okay, no, we don't. We're that's not pretty looking. messy under there, <laughs> but that's okay. We know what's in there. It's organized to us, right? <laughs> I would have to work on this again. Uh, some paper and um, some, some also some handbooks and and um, bills and, and, and stuff. So here we have um, compasses for um, paper chart navigation and pens and pencils. Um, over here we have our little weather station. Um, we do have uh, a radio that will work um, while we're at sea. We have our little um, transport man of aboard transponders, the mother um, unit, and um, a handheld radio um, to grab. That's more an, um, an emergency uh, device in case our regular radio is not working uh, VHF. So then we have a little iPad mini that we're using as a daughter uh, a device display for uh, the plotter in the cockpit. So we can actually see all the plotter data on this little iPad here. Mm -hmm. um, they're connected using Wi-Fi. Um, over here is the, the thermostat for our, for our heater, for our heating system. Um, this is, uh, these are the switches for our heating system. Um, here we have like some ancient but still functional a barometer, uh, a hygrometer and a, and a clock. Um, the clock's pretty loud, that's why we have to turn them off now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so here's where we keep our logbooks, our weather log and our route log. So our passage plan documents. Um, here we have like little walkie-talkies, we have the man of board transponders, we have um, like the AIS man of board um, devices. This is and these the are shelves. marked. Yeah. <laughs> um, here we have our Turaya and when satellite. Sea, when we're at sea, we keep those on us all the time. So here we have our Turaya satellite modem um, that uh, we've been using in Europe and African waters, but since we're moving west we will lose the um, coverage of the Turaya satellite network that's why we have now we will be using the Iridium network the Iridium, this is also um, a satellite modem satellite provides us a, a, like a wi-fi hotspot based on satellites so we can use our regular phones as um, satellite phones um, yeah and here's some cords and um, our phones this is kind of messy right now yeah. but um if there actually is a rhyme to all this reason. We have little compartments for all the different cords. Okay. And then, There's also a storage compartment in the seat. This is another locker. And Captain Jack wants to know what's in there. 
Yeah, and this is where we keep our camera equipment and some of our computer equipment and um, the drones. And and we have a um, um, what's that thing? So thank you. The sextant is in there. <laughs> so one day Mike's going to teach me how to use that. Binoculars handy for the cockpit. And here's our EPIRB for the boat. Um, yeah, that's a um, an emergency um, beacon that uh, can be activated manually or when it's in touch with water and it um, transmits an emergency signal um, using um, satellite network um, using I think four or six megahertz um, uh, frequency and transmitting our position our the name and MMSI of our boat and um, Captain Jack caught a fly <laughs> that we <laughs> and it just um, it, it let everybody know that we have an emergency so mm -hmm. hopefully people will catch the signal and the um, the Coast Guard or whoever is responsible for our sea area um, is going to send out somebody to, to rescue us <laughs> good yeah it's always good to know that's there So here we are in the cockpit again. Um, I love it because it's a center cockpit, it's very safe, it's protected from all sides, very deep. So in case of um, high seas, you really feel safe down here. Um, here's the entrance to our main cabin, over oh, there's the entrance to our stern cabin. Below us is um, the engine room, so we have to um, remove the floor of the cockpit to get access to the engine room. Over here. Below this board, we have our uh, gas, um, our gas cartridges. We're usually running on propane, but here in the south, they only have butane, so um, we're using butane and propane tanks, um, which is okay if you don't go into regions where um, temperatures can fall below zero. Over here, we have another opening um, that gives us easy access to the batteries and to the fuses and to. Uh, the charging units and we have a manual a manual bilge pump over here in terms of uh, uh, in, in the case of um, um, electricity fall that failure at sea um, that's very important so these are our winches our general winches um, these are bags for, uh, for the lines um, so we can operate the manual, um, from the cockpit which is basically the only sail that we can operate from the cockpit. Um, this is our uh, this is the main sheet for the main sail. So all the way up here. Um, yeah, this is a dark place. <laughs> Interesting thing is this little board over here. Yes, but we can move um, wherever we need it. Uh, that's very that's very practical when you're in a heavy tilt. It gives you a better stand when you're at the, at the helm. So now I want to show you um, the instruments that we're using. So we have everything from Raymarine. Um, so communicate very well. Um, they're using we're using an, um, the MicroTalk, uh, the Raymarine MicroTalk protocol. See that over here. Um, that's um, that's the little uh, Wi-Fi gateway, so we can have all the data that we see up here. Um, we can have it. We can see it down there on an iPad or any mobile device um, in the cabin or anywhere else on the boat. So let's start up here. This is the motor oil temperature. So this is uh, the voltage of the batteries um, in the front and the and the bow um, that operate the windlass, the anchor windlass, and um, the boat thruster. And that's the oil pressure of the engine. Uh, down here, 
We have the um, uh, another part of the engine panel. It's the RPMs, um, the operating hours, and um, the voltage of um, the alternator. Here we do have our um, plotter. That's much more than a plotter. I can basically all the data from all the sensors in the boat I can pull up here. So we have it as a plotter. It's an AIS, um, an AIS plotter. Um, but it also shows me um, the level of the tanks, the water tank, the fuel tank. Um, it uh, gives me um, the speed over ground. It gives me the, um, the wind data. Um, basically all data that I need um, to operate this boat. This is um, the wind indicator. The wind indicator is a, stand, a standalone unit um, as far as energy is concerned. So it's, you see the receiver down here has a little solar panel and so has the, uh, the sender up there in the main mast. So they communicate um, and this little device is um, feeding our network with our bus system with the wind data that we need for various purposes. This is our log, um, indicates the depth, indicates the speed, and indicates the sea temperature and the speed through the water. This is our autopilot control unit. So here we can set, um, do all sorts of settings for the autopilot. We can set a certain course, we can enter waypoints, or we can um, make the autopilot steer a certain angle to the wind. And this is our bow thruster, bow thruster control. And here we have certain, some, some controls that control the navigation lights, instru instrument lights, our um, windscreen wipers, and our horn. Up here we have uh, a magnetic compass. All the instruments here and the autopilot work with an electronic compass that's up there on the missing mast. And here we do have um, our Garmin InReach satellite tracker. That is also a basic communication, satellite communication device so we can um, fix our position, transmit our position using the Iridium satellite network to a Garmin server. Um, and we can also use the Iridium network to write and to receive short messages. A very interesting and a very helpful device. Um, since it's using the Iridium network, it's uh, practically working all over the world. So this is our steering wheel, of course. And this is our engine control. Um, um, yeah, just um, forward, reverse, idle. So we also have a good feature in this, uh, in this cockpit. Um, we can basically make it a complete room. So we can close it completely. And um, um, believe it or not, um, it really gets warm in here. We can use the cockpit as, a, yeah, as an additional living space when we are at port. When we are at sea, we have to at least open this intermediate section over here um, so that the main sheet um, has access to the to the main boom, but we're still pretty protected over here uh, from rain, splashing water, or sun. So we have a shade here um, and a sort of a, a good protection from all from all sides. Um, most of the time, if the weather is good, we just take this down too. So um, so we have a little better little better view because of course this obstructs the view just a little bit. Um, so we can pack this down and um, we have great view um, and see all ends of the boat. Even though her main propulsion is her sails, Seefalke is equipped with a 62 horsepower Vitas diesel engine. The engine is well maintained despite its 20 years of age, so we didn't feel it needed to be replaced or overhauled. Putting a level transmitter into the main fuel tank is the only thing we did to the engine and fuel system. The main fuel tank does not feed the engine directly. Fuel is pumped into the service tank first. The inspection glass allows us to detect contaminated or polluted fuel before it can damage the engine.
while we didn't have much to do about the engine, we had a lot of work to do on the electrical and energy supply system. The old batteries had all suffered from total discharge and needed to be replaced. We now have three battery blocks on board. One in the bow for the windlass and bow thruster, three 165 ampere hour consumer batteries and one 165 ampere hour starter battery. For safety reasons, the starter battery is always charged first. Only when the starter battery reaches 13.5 volts, the consumer batteries will also be charged. This ensures there is always enough power to start the engine at any time. The bow battery block is charged separately using its own charger. The power switchboard and charging systems needed a complete replacement. The old system had grown over decades. It was outdated and didn't meet current safety standards. Properly sized cables have been installed and labeled according to international standards. Now we actually do have a fair chance to diagnose faults at sea. On the top left, you can see the new fuse box. Below it, you see the two main switches for the starter and for the consumer batteries. To the left, the main switches, you can see the shunt that allows to shunt out the starter battery and start the engine using the consumer batteries. This is the new 12 volt 60 ampere charging controller for the landline. It works both for the 110 volt and 230 volt systems. This is the charging controller for the solar panels. The black box is the charging controller for our wind generator. In case the batteries are full charged, the heat exchanger on the left transforms surplus energy from the wind generator into heat. The new tank and battery management system shows the charging level of the batteries and the filling level of our water and fuel tanks. Cleaning up the cable tangle in the consumer switchboard was one of the main tasks during our electrical overhaul. For safety reasons, we eliminated the off switch for the bilge pump. We also reconnected it in a way that it will remain functional even with the battery main switch off. This is our Ebers Pecher heating system. It has proven very reliable, but up until now was only working manually. We have installed a thermostat that allows us to keep a certain minimum temperature on the boat. This is very important when you want to leave the boat in the water during the winter when sailing in colder waters. This is the drinking water inlet pipe. It was formerly made from steel and tended to corrode and leak, so we replace it with a PE pipe. While replacing our zinc anodes in the Canary Islands in December 2018, we had a rare opportunity to take a look underneath Seafalca's steel hull. So this is our boat thruster. It's a very small boat thruster and has been inst installed later. It's, it, the boat didn't come with the boat thruster originally. A very small one with 800 watt. Um, so um, it's basically a pipe with a little electro electrical motor, you know, with a propeller driven by an electrical motor. So that helps, you know, especially navigate the boat um, in the reverse because we have a long keel and it's almost impossible to steer the boat uh, going in reverse. So the keel construction is pretty interesting. I mean the whole boat is, is a Dutch design um, of the early 70s and it has a massive keel. As you can see it has a massive long keel. Um, but the most interesting part about it is if you look at the bottom of the keel it has a, about a meter of flat surface. So this boat is designed to actually fall dry in the tidal 
waters of the so-called Watton Sea in the North Sea. And um, it's basically designed to stand on dry, on the dry seabed. I haven't tried it. I've seen photos of it. I haven't tried it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's designed okay. for it. So, so, so this is our rudder. Yeah. It's pretty big, pretty massive. Um, and the good thing, but we need it, you know, we need it because um, we, um, we have that long keel. Mm -hmm. um, and the good thing about it, it on the one side, is protected by the keel, um, but it's completely open going the reverse, you know. So we have to be extremely careful if we go in reverse to not hit anything with the rudder. Um, so and this is a fixed shaft design, so it's not a sail drive like on most most boats today. You have sail drive. Okay. So kind of okay. While we're out here, this guy over here, they have a so-called moderate long keel. It's um it's probably a design of the same era as Sea Falcon, um, 70s or early 80s. But if we look over this, so this guy over here, this is a performance cruiser. They have um, a fin keel. Um, you see they have a very short keel with um, a thick and heavy end on the bottom. But it's also very thin compared with, uh, with our keel. Yeah. And what is so the advantage have, or disadvantage of? The advantage is um, I mean, in the optimum, like just uh, from the design point of view, is you want to have nothing in the middle and a very heavy part in the bottom, you know, to serve as a counterweight to the forces of the waves and the sails on the top. Um, so, in the past, they did not have the materials and the design skills to build a key like this. If you if you look at a performance racer today they kind of have like a thin a thin little construction and a so-called bomb on the bottom mm -hmm. um, the disadvantage is the advantage is of course that you have a lot of uh, there's much less friction and you have a better weight balance than on the, on the with the long heel but on the other hand if you hit a rock or something you know and you lose this keel you screw, you're screwed yeah. You'll capsize and you'll probably lose your boat. Uh -huh. Whereas losing that keel is almost impossible. You may have a hole in it, you know, but you may not lose the keel. The ke our keel is as long as the boat, almost. Exactly. And the, um, and the other advantage of a long keel is that the, the draft is um, much smaller. You know, we have a draft of 1.4, 1.5 meters. Whereas in order to achieve the same balancing counterweight you need like a two meter draft of this belt so mm -hmm. if you want to go in shallow waters um, a long heel is definitely better but on the other hand this boat is much faster you know it's much faster to sign and also um, it is much better maneuverable especially in the reverse well we're not in a hurry no we're not in a hurry Imagine, I mean, the boat is 44 years old and only had three owners. And this says something about the boat, right? Yeah. And, um, I mean, if the boat would be good, if they wouldn't like the boat, if the owners wouldn't like the boat, they would like get rid of it after one, two, three years. But yeah. nobody would keep the boat like for 30 years or for 10 years even. Right. Um, and uh, the first owner, I mean, whose son we met yesterday, he sold it to his own sailing club to let um, newbies uh, get kind of sailing. So I think that's says something about the character of this boat. It was really cool how they were talking about uh, that Sea Falcon was like the star of the sailing club. Yeah, and it, I, I've really, um, I remember when we sailed Sea Falcon from Bremen to Stralsund, that in the area of Bremen, like Bremerhaven, Cuxhaven, Helgoland, Sea Falcon was a celebrity just because of the coloring and because of, you know, the personalities of, of um, uh, the VBNs, that club, you know. Mm -hmm. um, in Sea Falcon, everywhere we came in the North Sea, you know, 
somebody was there who knew sea pocket <laughs> yeah yeah and i thought it was cool how they said they were so happy we didn't paint her yeah <laughs> that we kept her that bright orange color and they said the same thing i mean bird said the same thing he at first he hated it he yeah. hated it really badly and um later he started to love it and then he didn't want anything of it anymore you know yeah. i mean i love how no matter what marina we're in we can always spot sea oh yeah